Today we're going to talk about garbage collection. We will introduce memory management, automatic and manual. And we're going to talk a bit about uh, reference counting garbage collection and mark and sweep garbage collection. This today's lecture is inspired by Professor Michelle Mills lecture on garbage collector from Colorado State University. Okay, so for, for our motivation, let's recall our function eval term that is going to evaluate a term, right? So we have uh, as first parameter, the memory. So this is our memory representation, we're saying it starts empty, and it has a initial frame that is empty. Um, this frame is referenced by E0. So E0 is your root environment that is empty. Next, what we do, we have a program that is defining a function f, and f returns a closure, right? It returns a lambda that is then evaluated down to a closure and is capturing x. So the parameter that you initialize is what you're going to return here. This is this function is actually quite similar to the factory function factory that we defined uh, some lessons ago. So let's see what it does. We define this function, and then what we do is we call call function f three times. So let's observe what do you think is going to be. Uh, we know that the return value of this whole code should be the last expression being returned, right? So it should be a closure let's, with some environment, right? And some x, right? This is the function that we created. So we, we return a, a, a closure because that's what f calling f does. So what should be the output of um, the the output memory after calling this. So as a hint, you might know that, you might imagine that this should be creating, if you just look at what is the this line here, you will notice that E3, environment three, that means that you have four environments. So you should have three more than the ones you started with. So let's think about which could could those be. Think about that for a moment and try to answer the question. So this is actually a great way to exercise your understanding of uh, the interpreter you've been implementing. Okay, so if you've paused the video now, I should show you the output memory. Okay, so let's see what we have. E0, in E0 we're going to store, we only have one define, right? We only are creating this function, so we we're assigning it to variable f. So what variable f has is a closure, right? Because that's the, the returning this let the the func the outside function should return a closure. That closure is pointing is capturing e zero, so the enclosing environment, and is returning a lambda x that returns a lambda y. So lambda x and lambda y, all of this. Okay. So then what we do? We call f three times. So every time we call f, we are replacing x by whatever parameter we were given. Um, and as you can remember from function application, every time you call a function, you should create an in, a new environment. And that's what we do. So that's why we have e1, that's why we have e2 and e3, because precisely we invoked f three times. So every time we invoke f, we create a new closure and we link the called uh, function, we we link the new closure to the to the closure to the environment. So we link the the. Um, let me rephrase what I'm saying. Whenever you call a function, you should create a new environment that is linked to the environment of the closure you just called. So in this case, the closure we just called is zero, and that's why all of these three frames are linked to the e zero to the environment e zero. And as we can confirm, this is the parameter that we're being that we're passing, which is x. So we're assigning x to be two, x to be ten, and x to be uh, five. So that corresponds to the three ways we call function f. So you might be wondering, okay, so now I've called this program. This kind of seems useless. These three, we know that 
by calling these three functions, we should have these environments. But if you think about it, these three environments are never actually used outside of this code. It would be nice if we wouldn't be growing this memory these many times. So let's see the next example. Okay, so now we called it two more times. We should have how many more environments? Try to answer that. Exactly, we should have five environments. Whenever we call function, we will create a new environment there. So imagine you are calling this function inside a map. So I think if we're calling a function, if we, we do a map, right, we're going to call function f as many times as there are, there are elements in the list. Right? So imagine your list has a million elements. What's going to end up happening is that you're going to have one you're going to create a million environments. But do we need those environments? Well, it depends on what you're going to do with f, right? With the return value of f. If the return value is just a value, you allocate it, essentially, if you're returning, let's say you just return number 10. If you return number 10, the difference is uh, each of these calls would just return a value that is being discarded, right? Number 10, whatever, it's ignored. But you still have to create this closure, right? It doesn't matter whether or not you have a lambda here. If you return 10, you still have to create a new uh, environment per function call. It would be nice if you had a way to actually collect, know when to be able to delete these environments that were created upon calling a function. And that's exactly what we're going to learn today or study today, today's lecture. So do we need these frames? Can we reclaim them? And how do we know if we need them? Uh, that is the subject of memory management.